You can pray until you faint. But if you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. And it's no need of running and no need of saying, Honey, I'm not going to get in the mess. Black Power Talks. I'm Dr. Matsumela Odom. And I'm Dexter M. Lemwingu. Uhuru means freedom in Swahili, and freedom is on our minds 24-7. It's been a month since the beginning of Russia's military campaign to stop NATO expansion in the Ukraine. The March 2nd vote in the United Nations General Assembly on a resolution denouncing Russia revealed a split between the white countries of the world and many of the countries of Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America, 52 of which either voted against the resolution, abstained, or did not cast a vote at all. On today's episode of Black Power Talks, we explore the African to nationalist perspective on this war. We'll start by hearing from Louise Kinshasa, Congo-born Secretary General of the African Socialist International, currently based in London. A lot of people saying the majority of Africans, they say they're standing with Russia. And uh, this is something uh, is causing serious concerns for the Western, uh, uh, for the colonizers' leaders, the leaders of the U.S. or France or Britain or Belgium, that in Africa, people are calling for an alliance with Russia. And the young people who are the majority of the population in Africa, they're saying they're standing with Russia. That's why you saw this one of the explanation that some of the African president uh, abstained because they have to face the African population. Uh, regarding this uh, question, why African countries voted against um, uh, the not join basically uh, uh, the United States uh, uh, in voting against uh, Russia. Uh, in Africa, people are really... Uh, upset with uh, the role played by the United States and France and Britain in overthrowing uh, the government of Gaddafi, you have to be aware that many Africans from the region used to work in Libya, where they used to get a better salary than they would get uh, in their own countries because the economy of Libya was relatively developed compared to the economy of uh, uh, most of those uh, countries. And also, they remember Gaddafi was uh, uh, driving an agenda to unify Africa from the top, because we, we believe in uniting Africa from below, you know, in a revolutionary way. But Gaddafi was trying to get uh, a united Africa, uh, to have a united economy, uh, to have a new bank for development of Africa that will be based uh, in Cameroon, in, in Yaoundé. And Gaddafi was paying a lot of bills for those different uh, countries. And uh, to see France, the United States, under the leadership of Obama and, uh, and Britain overthrowing Gaddafi, Africans are still upset about that today. So they hold uh, those three countries, those three governments responsible for what's happening in Libya today. Because what happened in Libya since the... Uh, overthrow of Gaddafi's government and his assassination. Uh, that's also another matter. Uh, they also know, now there are evidence of it, that 
United States, France, Britain, they worked with the jihadist terrorists to not only to kill people in Libya, but to create chaos in the rest of Africa. Uh, you have organizations like uh, ACMI, which is linked to Al Qaeda. You have Mujao, which is linked to Islamic State. And they are creating chaos in Mali, in Burkina Faso, in Asia, in the region. So they hold these three uh, colonial capitalist government responsible for that. And uh, it makes it difficult for Africans, president, uh, to go in the UN and vote against Russia. So Africans are really, really clear on that. And also in Mali, France has been in Mali uh, since 2012. They had two military operations, Operation Servo and Operation Barkhan. And the French say they're going there to help Africans uh, fighting jihadists. But evidence has shown that the French are not fighting the jihadists. They're working with them. And uh, the French are there to occupy the ground to protect uh, their own interests, basically to control the minerals in Africa. They have seen African soldiers are being killed uh, by proximity of French uh, uh, soldiers. Uh, they have seen uh, the French using uh, the cover, uh, uh, the, the air cover, not to bring peace there, but to protect the jihadists. People are really, really upset in Mali. So there has been a mobilization all over Mali, asking for France to take his army out of Mali, and which is the case now. The French are packing away. The Mali government has expelled the, the French ambassador. The Mali has just shut down the French propaganda, uh, you know, RFE and the French 2024. They have done that. And another element that Africans are upset about it, you're probably familiar uh, with that, is the question of France domination of France CFA. You know, 14 countries in Africa, they have their currency dominated by France. France prints the money. France gets 65% every time there is a commercial operation. And France lends them their own money. It's just unbelievable in today to believe that France controls the economy of Africa. And uh, there is also the Central African Republic, where there is a Russian presence there. And uh, Africans have seen France working with the rebel, killing you know, civilians throughout Central Africa Republic. Uh, France trying to overthrow the government there because the government say France have been here for 60 years. There is no development. So we want to bring our partners so we can work with them. And they believe Russia is one of them. And if France will not accept that, they want to overthrow the government and the Russian participation prevented the overthrow of that government. So there is no way that president was going to go to the UN and vote against Russia. There is no way the Malian government is going to go to the UN and vote against the Russian government. And most of the countries in the region, which have been uh, destabilized by all these groups coming from Libya, or at least armed uh, by French, the United States and others, uh, they were going to vote against Russia because the population is away. They know why there is Boko Haram in Nigeria, why there is destabilization in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Niger, uh, in Mauritania, uh, in Cameroon, throughout the regions. They know. They know is the, the colonizers. They know that. So the popular opinion is quite informed about that. So. It's very difficult. And uh, plus the information that every African now is saying openly that the slave ships didn't come from Russia. The Russian didn't put us slave ships. Africans saying that on the continent there. They're saying the uh, Russian was not in the Berlin conference. They're saying the IMF and the World Bank are not from Russia. You know the, you know the IMF and the World Bank? They starved Africa, destroyed hospitals. I mean, they create they create chaos every, everywhere. So these are, of course, I remember the, the, the solidarity between, uh, you know, ex-Soviet Union uh, with uh, Angola, with Mozambique, you know, uh, people remember that. So it's really the talking, you know, uh, in a public place, you know, people are talking about openly. So it made it difficult for this African president to go in the UN and say, they are you know, on the side of the US or France or Britain. No, they just can't say it. They can't do it uh, uh, like that. So that these are uh, some of the, uh, uh, the reasons the vote went uh, 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 that way. I was born in a, in a Congo. We, 
the prime minister there, Padish Lumumba, uh, was assassinated by the CIA. And uh, they used to tell us he was killed because he was uh, working for uh, the Soviet uh, Union. And uh, here we are today. Uh, over 10 million people are killed in the Congo and the whole Western media is silence. Completely silence. And uh, there has not been a single uh, support of the uh, government or the forces killing people in the Congo by Soviet Union. Soviet Union doesn't even exist, you know. It's the United States that's doing it. It's the British that are doing it. The Belgians are doing it. All the giant corporations are doing it. And then the, uh, the United States asked the government of Congo to go to the UN and vote against Russia. When Russia has not played any role in killing anybody in the Congo. 10 million people killed. Congo refused to support the March 2nd United Nations resolution against Russia, as did the African heads of Algeria, Angola, Burundi, the Central African Republic, Equatorial Guinea, Madagascar, Mali, Mozambique, Namibia, Sudan, South Sudan, Senegal, Tanzania, Uganda, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. Tafari Mugheri spoke to us directly from South Africa, also known as Occupied Azania, where he serves as chairman of the African Socialist International from the Azania Front of the African Revolution. Part of the reason that uh, these are um, these are uh, how, how many 17 countries that voted um, that decided to abstain they are not doing it or they're not doing it because of um of of a recognition of of um of of just to stand against imperialism openly say we're standing against imperialism none of them have said that they are doing that because they can read the atmosphere everywhere you know uh they can see that uh, USA, the U.S. imperialism is not as powerful as it used to be. They can see the decline. They can see that uh, imp the, the U.S. imperialism is weakening. You know, that's why they can take the stance that they, they're taking right now. So, you know, they, they, there's, there's a shift in the balance of power. Countries throughout Asia, the Middle East, and Central and South America also refuse to back the U.N. resolution against Russia, including China, India, Vietnam, Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, Armenia, Bolivia, Nicaragua, Cuba, El Salvador, and Venezuela. China has refused the U.S. call to impose sanctions against Russia. A senior Chinese government official speaking to a March 19th security conference in Beijing said that sanctions imposed by Western nations on Russia over Ukraine are increasingly outrageous. China echoed Moscow's point of view on NATO saying the alliance should not further expand eastwards, forcing a nuclear power like Russia into a corner. You are listening to Black Power Talks, produced by WBPU, Black Power 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. In this episode, we explore an African international's perspective to this war. Russian President Putin recently discussed his terms for ending the war in Ukraine with Turkish President Erdogan who reported to the BBC. Firstly, Russia seeks an assurance from Ukraine that it will remain neutral and no longer seek to join NATO. This, along with the demilitarization of Ukraine, which has received billions in weaponry from the West since the U.S.-backed coup ousted Ukraine's pro-Russian government in 2014. Putin is demanding that Ukraine recognize Crimea as Russian territory and recognized the independence of Luhansk and Donetsk in the regions of Donbass. Finally, Russia calls for the denazification of Ukraine and the ban on the Russian language to be lifted. This month, Burning Spear TV hosted two panel discussions on YouTube regarding the Russia and Ukraine situation. Speaking directly from Moscow was Alexander Ionov, president of the anti-globalization movement of Russia, an NGO organizing against the global dominance of transnational corporations, as well as the monopolization of the world's system of relations and governance by a few individual countries. Ayanov shared the outlook of Russia, 
first providing some recent background to the current conflict. In 2014, uh, legally elected uh, president of Ukraine, um, Viktor Yanukovych, is forced to flee Ukraine uh, while um, while it is being filled uh, by nationalists, uh, fascists marching along with European politicians. During that time, the United States was paying a uh, few million dollars per day uh, for uh, these ultra-nationalists uh, to throw Molotov cocktails into, on the police and to shoot innocent people, uh, making riot uh, in the streets of Ukraine. After that, we witness two very important events uh, that uh, forced separation of uh, two um, pieces from Ukraine, two republics. Fascist Turchinov uh, has made an official order, uh, declared that it's illegal uh, to use Russian language. Nevertheless, there are over uh, 30 million people speaking Russian in that country. Then we witness um, even more tragic events uh, when communists and leftists uh, uh, went to the streets, uh, the streets of Odessa, uh, to protest against this capture of power, and they are forced into this uh, building um, by ultranationalists and burned alive there. So the people of Donetsk and Lugansk republics, uh, over 90% of the population decide to uh, separate themselves from this country who is, uh, well, controlled by fascists. Next, uh, this fascist Turchinov uh, declares a war on, on these two republics and uses all kinds of weaponry against them. In the first week, over uh, 2,000 people died, uh, all of them a uh, peaceful population. And not one uh, European country said anything, not one American can politician uh, said anything because basically these uh, Nazis that uh, begin killing people there, well, they are installed by US government. Uh, then went on uh, long eight years of negotiations with participation of Russia. For eight years, we have tried to negotiate uh, with uh, Ukrainian powers and the West. Uh, uh, for uh, the mode of ceasefire. Finally, what uh, the West did, they installed this uh, comedian, and under um, the power of this comedian, uh, started to raise an army of uh, 150,000 people, uh, moving this army towards uh, the two republics who wish to live outside of all this nightmare. Uh, Putin moved uh, the army uh, to the Ukrainian border and said to European and American leaders, so uh, Putin said, okay, uh, you should stop uh, delivering weapons uh, to these national battalions, to Ukrainian army, you should stop killing of our people, uh, people whom, well, Basically, they are Russian, and we are we feel responsible for them because they are getting killed daily. Uh, you should stop all this uh, madness, and none of them did anything. Uh, that when uh, came this order to move the army in, basically, it's a reply to NATO aggression. Uh, there uh, were uh, documents published uh, by Ministry of Defense, Russian Ministry of Defense, seized from um, from Ukrainian territory. Uh, plans on moving on this uh, 150,000 uh, men army uh, into Donetsk and Lugansk uh, using uh, American and European weapons uh, to destroy and kill basically everyone there.
otherwise it will be like uh, in Georgia when empowered by uh, American leaders uh, they attacked Ossetia uh, started killing their uh, people we couldn't afford the thing to happen with Donetsk and Lugansk Arnold then went on to discuss Ukrainian attacks on Russian language speakers and pro-Russian or leftist activists since the 2014 U.S.-backed coup. Anti-globalization movement president Ayanov addressed the situation of students and foreign nationals from Africa and other colonized countries who continue to report being abused, attacked, detained, and thrown off trains by Ukrainian officials as they attempt to leave Ukraine to return home. И посмотрите, как они относятся к африканским и индийским студентам на Украине, как они их притесняют, избивают, отнимают у них деньги и не дают им вернуться домой, потому что они поганые расисты. Спасибо. And see how they treat African and Indian students in uh, Ukraine territories now, how they beat them up, how they take all of their money and not allow them to leave. Uh, basically holding them hostages. They are racists. Сейчас мы стоим вместе с африканскими студентами на одной линии у одного барьера на Украине, где к русским и к всем африканцам есть российское отношение и Они говорят о том, что они последователи вот этой белой нации, о которой говорил Гитлер в 1939 году перед началом большой войны. Uh, right now uh, we are standing by African students in Ukraine, and uh, we see, we both in fact see this uh, racism by um, Ukrainian authorities, and they are treating us um, exactly by Hitler's ideology, like they are one supreme white nation, and uh, like everyone who is not like them, well, he should cease to exist, uh, and uh, they really don't care if it's uh, Russian or African or uh, somebody from India, maybe, or, or whatever. Каждый день я говорю по телефону с представителями различных организаций и государственных институтов из Индии, Азии, Ближнего Востока и Африки, и все они возмущены тем поведением, российским поведением со стороны украинской власти в отношении иностранных студентов. Но нам удалось за последнюю неделю вывести из нацистского плена 126 африканцев. I'm holding constant contact with various institutions in Asia, in India, in Middle Eastern countries, and we are all working to extract these students held hostages by Ukrainian authorities, and last week we managed to extract 126 students. Сейчас их безопасности ничего не угрожает, но есть еще представители различных африканских стран, которые до сих пор остаются в городах и поселениях, где действуют украинские националистические батальоны, и их безопасности есть достаточно сильная угроза. Uh, and uh, although these uh, people uh, that we have saved, they are uh, actually safe and sound now, uh, but there are still many people, including Africans, uh, spread all around Ukraine in areas controlled by national battalions, and uh, we really are afraid for their lives. You are listening to Black Power Talks, produced by WBPU. Black Power 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. In this episode, we explore an African internationalist perspective to this war. Also on the March 20th Burning Spirit TV YouTube broadcast was African People's Socialist Party's Chairman Omale Shetela leading the panel discussion as part of his weekly Omale Tabmi Sunday study. 
The colonial media has pretended as if this war began in February 2022. Chairman Amali has centered the colonial question, specifically the colonial mode of production. The chairman explains that Russia did not move out of feudalism through the colonial mode of production, as did the white countries uniting today against Russia. Modern Russia emerged through a process of socialist revolution, workers' revolution. Chairman explains today's war as part of a 105-year-long anti-Russian campaign led by the U.S. and Western European powers. By placing the colonial mode of production at the center of the question, Chairman of Malaysia Teller places Africa to the center of discussion and moves Africans from objects to subjects in this discussion. The invasion of Russia by colonial powers in 1918 was an invasion to protect the colonial mode of production that was begun with the attack on Africa more than 600 years ago. The threat of what would become Soviet Russia as, as revolutionary abettors and examples for the emancipation of workers and the oppressed of the world could not be tolerated by the colonialists. And I would remind everyone that the 19th invasion of Russia did not occur in a vacuum. The meaning of our definition of the colonial mode of production that Russia, independent of its will, was fighting against is crystallized by the fact that the invasion of Russia was initiated by the colonial powers during the same time of the 11 million strong anti-colonial Garvey movement stretching around the globe demanding Africa for Africans at home and abroad. It was a time frame of Pancho Villa and Emiliana Zapata's revolutionary, anti-colonial revolutionary work in Mexico and the Sandinista National Liberation Front in Nicaragua. In 19, 1915, uh, just three years before the, uh, the invasion uh, of Russia by all of these colonial powers, this was the year that the United States Marines invaded Haiti and stole all the gold uh, in its treasury and forced the Haitian government at gunpoint to change its constitution, allowing whites to own land for the first time since its, 19, since its 1804 revolution. Of course, all this colonial aggression by the United States was a normal reflex for a country that was itself founded as a settler colony, no different than South Africa and Israel, a country whose economy was built on stolen indigenous land and stolen African labor, earning its special place within the colonial mode of production defined by the same means and relations of production globally that are reflected domestically in the United States. This was the basis and context for the United White Nationalist invasion of Russia in 1918 and the ongoing economic quarantine intended to break the back of the Soviet state. This is also the basis for the 1949 creation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO, which was explicitly created <clears throat> to contain and crush Soviet Russia. I think it's important to make this point because all of this noise about this democratic war by Europe against Russia <clears throat> is exposed to anybody who understand that as a fallacy, as a lie, uh, by anybody who understands that NATO was created explicitly for the purpose of attacking Russia. In 1949, the existing world order led since 1949 by the international colonialist bloc known as the Atlanticists achieved its current political and economic anti-Russia configuration during this period of the 1940s. In the 1980s, the U.S. government under the regime of James Earl Carter, with the leadership of Zygmunt Brzezinski, his national security advisor, drew the Soviet Union into a military conflict in Afghanistan to overthrow its government that was allied with, the Soviet, with Soviet Russia and to extend NATO's border closer to Soviet encirclement a host of so-called color revolutions and related struggles 
aided by opportunism. The desire to join the white colonial world of Europe and the US in partaking the flesh of the colonized and to experience the standards of life common to other white people to our disadvantage has led to the expansion of NATO to now include 30 different countries arrayed against Russia. Since the 1991 dissolution of the Soviet Union, the US has escalated its efforts to contain Russia. According to one military, one online source, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1919 and 1991, the NATO military alliance has extended its borders 800 miles to the east, incorporating Poland, Hungary, Czech, Czechia, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Croatia, Montenegro, and North Macedonia. In 2021, NATO officially recognized Ukraine itself as an aspiring member, and Sweden and Finland are also considering joining the anti-Russia alliance. I just want to really draw our attention to the fact that all these forces who are joining the so-called anti-Russian alliance, what they're doing in effect is joining on the side of the colonizers. They are fighting to have the same kind of life chances, life uh, situations, uh, 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 living standards uh, that, have, that have become normal for white people, except for those people who were quarantined because of a relationship with the Soviet Union. Uh, and so those people who are now free uh, from that relationship, they're free to join in with the other white countries to suck the blood of black people and of colonized peoples around the world to participate in economy with this foundation on that. So while many have been forced to recognize the existence of colonialism as it relates to individual countries, the African People's Socialist Party has determined that the initial 15th century European colonization begun in Africa, developed into a mode of production itself a colonial mode of production that continues to define the political landscape of the world. Western European white colonial identity and the existing colonial mode of production enveloping the world were achieved during this period. Unlike most of Europe, Russia developed from feudalism, Russia's, Russian development from feudalism did not go through the colonial mode of production, but is a product of the Russian socialist-led revolution of 1917. This is why Russia today, although it makes no pretense of being communist or revolutionary, has been able to briefly enter into the colonial mode of production on its own terms, free from the absolute dictates of the United States. Under the leadership of Vladimir Putin, Russia has become an active, aggressive opponent of the unipolar world domination of the United States. And this confounds and challenges the strategic equilibrium of the colonial mode of production, contributing to the crisis made manifest within the United States domestically and fracturing US dominated hegemonic unity of the Atlanticists globally. The 2014 CIA engineered coup to put a puppet in power in Ukraine on Russia's Western border along with the imposition of a puppet government and fascist filled military and the murder of an estimated 13,000 ethnic Russian Ukrainians in the eight years since the coup was the beginning of a comprehensive intensification of a 100 year long war against Russia that has resulted in the existential defensive war being fought by Russia against the global colonial ruling class and its minions. Thus, it is absolutely necessary for Africans and all the victims of European colonialism to take a definitive stance in solidarity with Russia, which independent of its own consciousness is fighting against the power of colonial slavery that has dominated the world of Africa and Africans for 600 years. Chairman O'Malley had visited Russia a few years ago 
representing Africa at the Moscow Conference, A Dialogue of Nations, The Right to Self-Determination and the Construction of a Multipolar World, which was attended by representatives of unrecognized states and self-determination movements, including the Lebanese Democratic Party, Irish Republic, Sinn Féin Party, and representatives of Somaliland, Boriquin, Western Sahara, and the Movement for the Revival of Talish. The organizers of the conference hoped that it would show the world that the right of a nation to self-determination is as important as a state's right to decide its policies and forms of government. This is when I met first met uh, Sasha, uh, comment uh, Alex. Uh, he invited me. In fact, this shirt that I'm wearing, I'm sorry, you cannot see it, uh, is uh, the Russian uh, uh, writing there is one that I got during that time while I was in Russia. It was a really important conference. Uh, I met people from around the world who were invited to Russia in 1915 uh, to, uh, uh, as a part of a global movement, uh, speaking to the question of self-determination. I met people who were there from Syria, from Armenia, from uh, uh, various other places around the world who were also uh, uh, seeking uh, of liberation. And Russia had provided for us an opportunity uh, to come together uh, to see what we could do to unite the struggle that we were involved in. I met people from Ukraine who were there. Uh, and I had looked forward to going to Ukraine uh, as a consequence of meeting uh, the people from Ukraine who were there at that meeting in Moscow. Uh, so it was really uh, impressive to me. And it was also impressive because while I was there, uh, I was reminded that Paul Robeson, who had been an extraordinary uh, uh, fighter uh, for the rights of the people, African man who was born and lived in the United States had been to Russia. Uh, and in fact, he was poisoned while in Russia. He was uh, by, by CIA agents. He had been given some kind of uh, 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 drink that um, affected his, uh, his ability uh, to perform uh, as an activist uh, in the United States. And, but I also uh, went to uh, uh, the, the square of uh, Alexander Pushkin, uh, extraordinary uh, uh, African man who uh, is renowned uh, in Russia as one of the most important literary figures in Russia, black man. I mean, I, I bought a portrait, a painting of Alexander Pushkin while I was there. I listened uh, uh, while uh, in the subways to, uh, in Moscow, extraordinary, most beautiful things you can ever, you cannot, you, you, you should go to this. Everybody, if, for no other reason, go to Moscow to go to this in, incredibly beautiful, Subway, and it's been there for a long period of time. And I heard uh, uh, Paul Robeson singing uh, over uh, the system there, uh, the uh, International, and he was singing in Russian. So this is, this is Russia. And I've met the Russian people, uh, and I've heard how people say that the Russians don't have any rights. I was in Russia, and I've seen demonstrations in Russia who were protesting against something that they thought. Uh, the Russian government had done wrong. Uh, and so, I mean, much of most of what we in the United States and other places who rely on information from the United States hear about Russia, their lies, and certainly everything that we hear uh, uh, regarding this uh, defensive war that Russia has been forced to fight uh, for its life uh, is a lie. So uh, I, was, I was quite uh, pleased uh, with this opportunity to be in Russia uh, Moscow, and I was there on, on at least two different occasions uh, and was going to go the third occasion, and I was going to go to the Donbass region, except the COVID uh, stopped all uh, 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 movement, airline movement, et cetera, and made it impossible to do. So uh, I, I, was, I was really pleased, uh, really pleased to meet Russians, uh, to go to uh, restaurants with Russians, to go to supermarkets, uh, with Russians to go to marketplaces and just to meet with Russians. Uh, so I, I wanted to say that uh, because uh, if you listen to the media uh, uh, coming from the United States, uh, you would think of Russians as two-headed monsters and things like that. And 
it's quite the opposite. And the attitude of the Russians were quite different uh, because it was they are not attitudes that were born, uh, that came from uh, or developed from slavery and colonialism like you find uh, in the so-called West where the colonialism and slavery uh, uh, has its origin and that continues to dominate the consciousness of white people here and now. That's why you see the white left, the so-called leftists in the United States, uh, uh, they are white nationalists. They are, they are like, colon most of them are like uh, 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 colonialist leftists. They are left colonizers and they're not, generally speaking, able to unite uh, uh, against the oppression of uh, peoples of the world, including unite with Russia in this defensive war that is fighting against the United States uh, through Ukraine. The US and the West cannot claim that they're fighting against Russia now in the fight against communism. They can't make that claim today. They're fighting for Russia now, though for the same reason they invaded Russia in 1917. Because in 1917, Russia was independent of the colonial powers of the world. And today, under uh, President Pu uh, uh, Putin, Russia has remained independent of the colonial powers of the world. And Putin has struggled to put Russia uh, on a path in its own interest, as opposed to being in the interest of the Western colonial powers. So they can't say, they don't even say anymore they're fighting against communism. But for 105 years now, uh, uh, since the invasion, 1918, 104 years, they have been making consistent war against Russia. And this is just the latest iteration of that war. United forever in friendship and labor, our mighty republics will ever endure. The great Soviet Union will live through the ages, the dream of a people, their fortress secure. Long live our Soviet motherland, Built by the people's mighty hand. Long live our people, united and free. Strong in a friendship tried by fire. Long may our crimson flag inspire. Shining in glory for all men to see. Through days dark and stormy, while great Lenin led us, our eyes saw the bright sun of freedom above, and Stalin, our leader, with faith in the people, inspired us to build a land that we love. future destroyed the invader and brought to our homeland the laurels of fame a glory will live in the memory of nations and all generations will honor her name long live our soviet motherland built by the people's mighty hand Long live our people, united and free, strong in a friendship tried by fire. Long may our crimson flag inspire, shining in glory for all men to see.
people's mighty hand. Long live our people, united and free. Strong in our friendship, pride by fire. Long may our crimson flag inspire, shining in glory for all men to see. You are listening to Black Power Talks, produced by WBPU. Black Power 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. In this episode, we explore an African internationalist perspective to this war. On March 17th, the African People's Socialist Party held a press conference at the Uhuru House in St. Petersburg, where Chairman Amali Chatella presented the group's position on the Russia-Ukraine situation. The African People's Socialist Party calls for unity with Russia, in this defensive war in Ukraine against the world colonial powers. The February 2014 CIA inspired or initiated and led coup in Ukraine was a crucial event contributing to Russia's defensive war being fought in Ukraine. However, the event most significant to this war was the invasion of Russia following the 1917 revolution that resulted in the establishment of a socialist state stemming from an international movement to destroy the global parasitic capitalist system. It was this invasion of Russia by all the colonial powers of the world, including Japan and the United States, that the African People's Socialist Party recognizes as the critical event that should contribute to an African position on the current war being fought in Ukraine. This was the beginning of the colonial war against Russia that it is fending itself against today in its Ukrainian iteration. The invasion of Russia by colonial powers in 1918 was an invasion to protect the colonial mode of production that was begun with the attack on Africa more than 600 years ago. The threat of what would become Soviet Russia as revolutionary abettors and examples for the emancipation of the workers and the oppressed of the world could not be tolerated by the colonialists. This was the basis of the United invasion of Russia in 1918 and the ongoing economic quarantine intended to break the back of the Soviet Union. This is also the basis of the 1949 creation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO, explicitly created to contain and crush Soviet Russia. The existing world order led since 1949 by the international colonialist bloc known as the Atlanticists, achieved its current political and economic anti-Russia configuration during this period of the 1940s. In the 1980s, the US government under the regime of James Earl Carter, with the leadership of Zygmunt Brzezinski, his national security advisor, drew the Soviet Union into military conflict in Afghanistan to overthrow its government that was allied with Soviet Russia and to extend NATO borders closer to Soviet encirclement. A host of so-called color revolutions and related struggles aided by opportunism, the white desire to join the white colonial world of Europe and its and the United States in partaking of the flesh of the colonized and and, uh, and uh, to experience the standards of life common to other white people to our disadvantage has led to the expansion of NATO. Since the 1991 dissolution of the Soviet Union, the US has worked to contain Russia. According to one online source, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, 
the NATO military alliance uh, has extended its borders 800 miles to the east, incorporating Poland, Hungary, Czechia, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Ukraine, uh, Slovenia, Montenegro, and, and North Macedonia. In 2021, NATO officially recognized Ukraine itself as an aspiring member, and Sweden and Finland are also considering joining the anti-Russian alliance. While many have been forced to recognize the existence of colonialism as it relates to individual countries, most do not understand that the initial 15th century European colonization of Africa developed into a mode of, pro of production, a colonial mode of production that continues to define the political and economic landscape of the world. European identity and the existing colonial mode of production enveloping the world were achieved during this period. Unlike most of Europe, Russian development from feudalism did not go through the colonial mode of production, but is a product of the Russian socialist revolution. This is why Russia today, although it makes no pretense of being communist or revolutionary, has been able to briefly enter into the colonial mode of production on its own terms, free from the absolute dictates of the US. Under the leadership of Vladimir Putin, Russia has become an active, aggressive opponent of the unipolar world domination of the United States. This confounds and challenges the strategic equilibrium of the colonial mode of production contributing to the crisis made manifest within the United States domestically and fracturing US dominated hegemonic unity of the Atlanticist globally. The 2014 CIA engineered coup to put a puppet in power in Ukraine on Russia's Western border, along with the imposition of a puppet government and fascist filled military and the murder of an estimated 13,000 ethnic Russian Ukrainians in the eight years since the coup was the beginning of an intensification of the 100 year long war against Russia that has resulted in the existential defensive war being fought by Russia against the global colonial ruling class and its minions. Thus, it is absolutely necessary for Africans to take a definitive stance in solidarity with Russia, which independent of his own consciousness is fighting against the power of colonial slavery that has dominated the life of Africa and Africans for over 600 years. Uhuru. That was Chairman Amali Chitella speaking to the press on March 17th in St. Petersburg, Florida. Presentations excerpted for this episode of Black Power Talks can be viewed in full on the Burning Spear TV YouTube channel. You have been listening to Black Power Talks, produced by WBPU, Black Power 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. Our theme song, Get Up and Do Something, was written and performed by Alikia Ngoma. Thanks to the Black Power Talk radio show's production, research, and promotions team, including Jaja Robinson, Empress Livewire, and Ahib Sapanda. You can pray until you faint, but if you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. And it's no need of running and no need of saying, honey, I'm not going to get in the mess.
something. Ah!